I'm Jan Ezra. Thanks for coming. This is a session on choosing a corporate YouTube system. And the agenda is going to be, first I'm going to show you how a corporate YouTube system works, just to give you a feel for what they are. Then we're going to re review some case studies um, from different companies who are using corporate YouTubes. We're going to look at what eBay is doing. We're going to look at Philips. And we're going to look at um, Oracle. So the first one is a, is a case study that I wrote on eBay. I've got good information about why they implemented it and how they implemented it. And the, um, the other two case studies are case studies that I got in conjunction with Kaltura. And you'll, you'll have their video case studies. You can watch them yourself. But I'll give you a summary of what I found from there. And then we'll spend the last few minutes covering features you want to consider when you're purchasing a corporate YouTube. OK, the first, the first interesting point about corporate YouTubes is trying to find out what you buy once you decide you want one. So I, I got some calls from companies, and they said, hey, we've got a corporate YouTube. Can, we, uh, can you review it for us? And I went to their website and tried to find a corporate YouTube product, and oftentimes there isn't one. So some companies provide corporate YouTube functionality as part of their greater online video platform offering, and some companies offer them as a standalone product. Media Platform offers a corporate or an enterprise YouTube called Primetime. Vidismo has several, or several uh, YouTube-like products, and the one for corporations is their enterprise tube. And then for Kaltura and Kumu, they don't have a separate product category for corporate YouTube. It's merely functionality that they enable or disable within their greater portal or their greater uh, online video platform. So, if you're going to be looking for these products, you've got to kind of figure out which company you want to buy from and then what you need to buy from them because it's going to be different from each company. You know, the high level corporate YouTube, I guess the, the message is you want to give your employees the ability to upload videos for shared viewing uh, either publicly or privately. Uh, you know, you can obviously you can use YouTube in general. But if you do that, you, you lose a lot of rights to the video um, and a lot of control over the video. And let me say, I will, I will make this handout available on my website um, as soon as I go back to my room, um, probably certainly by, by the end of the day today. My website is thestreaminglearningcenter.com. And um, sorry I couldn't get it up there before, but uh, I wasn't able to time-wise. So don't feel like you need to take uh, extensive notes on this. This will be available uh, by the end of the day on my website. Once again, it's streaminglearningcenter.com. If, um, if you can't find that, just Google my name, and, and it should come up fairly quickly. OK, so I reviewed the, um, the Vidismo corporate YouTube system. And that's a review that should be uh, appearing on streaming media website sometime very soon. And I wanted to go through their workflow about um, how they created specific user rights, how they created channels, how they uploaded video, how they moderated video. Because I think every, every system that I looked at has very common characteristics in this area. right? So. If you're bringing a YouTube into the enterprise, you care about who gets to upload what, who gets to do what. I mean, you're creating a lot of channels. You want to make sure that the average or the, the, the lowest level employee, maybe they can view, maybe they can upload, but certainly they can't change where the channel is viewed, what the channel branding looks like, you know, whether they're comments, other aspects of the, um, of the uh, corporate YouTube functionality. So what Vidismo does is they define viewers with different rights. So a viewer basically gets the ability to view, rate, and comment a video that's been uploaded. A contributor gets all the rights of a viewer plus the ability to upload for approval. A moderator gets to view, rate, comment, upload, and moderate the content. So the moderation capability is performed in this, you know, in, in their taxonomy by someone at the moderator level. A manager has moderator plus rights, plus can affect channel settings, user access, and, and can view the analytics. 
and then an administrator can um, has all the rights of the manager plus channel creation, branding, user management. So if you make a channel private, the only people who can change that designation would be an administrator and a manager. If you decide you don't want comments or ratings on a video, the only people who can change that would be managers and administrators. And, and, and those are the kind of user rights that you're going to set up first. Um, And we'll talk about how this integrates with the corporate system in a second. So the first thing you're going to do is define your users and define the rights that those users have. The second thing you're going to do is define your channel structure, which obviously determines how people are going to view your video. So all of the corporate YouTube systems, as you'll see in a moment, have search capabilities but really the basic structure of how people are going to view these videos are going to be within a channel. So what you're seeing here is the Dismos feature relating to how you're going to set up a channel. And in their paradigm, they've got different channel types that you can, you can either accept as is or customize. So a public channel would be a channel that anybody outside the enterprise can view. So if you want to create channels for consumers, you know, people who are outside the firewall, for partners, you can do that. If you want to create internal only channels, you can do that as well. That might be viewable by anybody who has an internal login. A restricted channel could be, could be seen by only specific classes of viewers, and, then, and so on and so on. And there's completely custom capabilities where you can control all of the aspects of the channel as shown here. So first you're going to, you're going to set up the users, then you're going to set up the channels, and then you're going to define channel specific rights like can users upload content. So you may want some channels that a typical user cannot upload to, only administrators and managers. Are comments allowed? Is moderation required? And will there be ratings allowed for those videos? So this is how you control where the videos are shown and what features users have respecting those particular videos. And then from a login capability, and this is, this is going to be, for a lot of organizations, this is going to be the most important area of differentiation between the products because you, if you've got a, a sophisticated internal network, which most large enterprises do, you want to enable single sign-on. So how the, how the service or how the product uses that or implements that is going to be a critical differentiation point. You want to ask about it early. And this is, um, this is the Dismos capability. You can log on users directly into the Dismos system using their logon. You can use a corporate logon. You can use a third-party logon like Facebook or, or Twitter. Um, and then here are some other related ca capabilities of the system. So if you are looking at different corporate YouTube systems, how you log in is going to be very, very critical and understand how you do it, what the implementation details are, but also understand what the cost structure is. Because a lot of companies charge extra for this capability. You need to know how much extra and um, you know, other, implement other implementation details. And then here's the basic workflow. In, once again, in the Bedismo system, this is going to look a little bit different for each system, but they're all going to allow the user to upload or people with rights to upload the ability to upload videos. Um, in the Bedismo system, if you want to give users the ability to set capabilities like social sharing, allowing embedding, um, those type of features you can but they can't change any access related or, or similar setting controls. Once a viewer, excuse me, once, once a contributor uploads this video, if moderation is required, it's going to go into moderation before it can be viewed by anybody who has access rights to that channel or that particular content. And then in the Vidismo system, you're going to assign different managers and administrators to get notification when a video is enabled. They're going to go to an administration page to, um, to approve the video, 
and then they have the ability to approve, reject, or adjust the settings for that video. And if they, so they can approve or reject, if they click the, um, the settings area, they can go back and review all the settings that were set by the person who uploaded that video. And then once the video is approved, it goes into a portal. This is when I reviewed Vidismo, I set up my own Streaming Learning Center portal, and all of the enterprise YouTubes are going to give you the ability to set which categories show up here, how you identify videos that are prioritized and shown on top. When I talked about the search capabilities, this is how you would search uh, within the Vidismo structure for a particular video. But when a user logs into the Vidismo Enterprise YouTube, this is what they see. Now, all of the Enterprise YouTube systems are going to offer some kind of portal or integration into your existing portal. So if you want to look at this within SharePoint or you want to look at this within whatever enterprise portal you're running, you should be able to integrate uh, a lot of this functionality into your existing video portal or your existing portal for, uh, for your organization. You're going to see a lot of difference in terms of how much customization is going to be allowed in the portal. You know, anywhere from, you know, in the Dismo system, it's obviously very easy to set up a logo, choose some basic colors. Other organizations are going to give you complete CSS control over the appearance of that, of that portal. So a lot, you're going to want to brand the portal. You need to figure out what branding capabilities are offer as a whole, and then how much you can customize the appearance of each channel. I mean, if you, if you set up a channel for a different division, you may want that to look totally differently. You need to figure out if that's allowable in the system or if every channel needs to look the same. And once someone chooses to, to view a video, that's going to show up as in a separate player, and that's an example of one of the players offered by Vidismo. Vidismo lets you choose three players. Um, so you can choose HTML5, you can choose Flash, you can choose Silverlight. All for viewing, obviously, within the browser. If you're viewing on a, on a, on a device, uh, you're going to be much more limited in terms of your, of your choices there. You know, the, the features are going to be pretty similar. Obviously, if you can rate the video, there are ratings. If you can offer comments, there's a comments field. Different systems offer different features relating to playlist functionality. So if you're interested in creating a playlist, you need to ask, OK, well, you know, how do I create the playlist? What dynamic or static uh, uh, characteristics can I create that playback, uh, the, uh, the playlist with? And then you also need to judge the customizability of the player and also the general look and feel of this player. The Vidismo player, as it currently exists, here looks pretty, a little bit out of date, perhaps. You know, it could, could look a little bit more updated. Some of the other systems, you know, I've looked at the media, in, the, uh, media platform system. I've looked at the Kaltura system, and the player looks a little bit more like what you would expect to see from, you know, a YouTube or other common video portals that are out there um, today. So player look and feel, I think, as we're going to get into why organizations are implementing corporate YouTube functionalities. It's kind of one of the ways they're trying to keep up with the expectations of their, their employee base. So if your employees are looking at YouTube, they're looking at um, Twitter, they're looking at all these social media sites every day, you, wanna, you want an enterprise YouTube that presents a similar look and feel. You don't want it to look a little bit dated, which you know, I'm sure I'm sure Vidismo is in a, in a constant state of update of their look and feel. I mean, every organization is, but I think that's a critical decision um, differentiator between the various uh, product offerings. Most of the systems, but not all, they offer comment-related workflows. Um, as we'll hear, you know, eBay, for example, doesn't moderate their video content. You know, they, they feel like their employees are responsible enough not to upload stuff that's going to be offensive. That's a great policy, but you need to have a flagging mechanism to, you know, so an employee who's watching a video can say, hey, wait, this is offensive for some reason. This shouldn't be up here. And, and how that works and that, that availability is going to be a, a major differentiation point between a lot of the, 
competitive offerings. And then once you, um, once you actually have employees viewing the videos, you want analytics uh, relating to those videos. And you want analytics in, in specific categories. So Bidismo does a nice job here. They've got user and group analytics. So you can see how many users in a group are watching a video. Um, you can also track how videos are doing individually. So if you've got a, a um, co corporate announcement type video, you want all employees to watch it, or you want to see the engagement with that video or engagement with any particular video, you can do that in the viewer analytics here. Vidismo also has very extensive functionality as it relates to quizzes and certifications. Not all systems give you that capability, but if you want a system that can, uh, you know, if you've got a new type of certification test that people need to take, you can send that to the viewers who need to take it, send them a quiz that they need to take, and then here in this particular analytics section, you can track who took the quiz, what their score was, whether they passed or not. So that's one of the functions that some of the some of the corporate YouTube system, systems offer, but not all, and, and this is where you would check it out within the, um, the Vidismo system. So that's, you know, that's probably 90 to 95 percent of the high-level functionality of the system, right? You create your users, you create your channels, you upload your content, you moderate it, you find it, and then you watch it. And within all of the systems, you know, I've looked at, at Three in depth. I've looked at four or five in in, in a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, examination, and they all offer that that basic core of functionality. That's that's essentially what a what an enterprise YouTube does for you. Is there a social component to any of these? Good question. Um, so in the you know obviously that's going to be a point of of uh, differentiation between between some of the contenders. In this particular video, in this, in this particular video, can we, you see enable sharing or, or allow social sharing. So that does give you the ability to, you know, uh, mention it on Twitter, mention it on Facebook, like it, do all, do all those capabilities. It's gonna vary by system, but they all offer the, the, major, um, the major categories. What's interesting is that you can have a, um, you know, you can have a video that, even though it's a private video, if you offer social media integration, somebody tweets it with a link to the video, somebody would actually have to sign in with the corporate login to, to, act, to access that video. So just because you, you make it available socially or notice of the video available socially doesn't mean everybody can watch it. And that's, you know, obviously that's important, right? Because if the video is supposed to be private, you want it to be private. Okay, so why you want a corporate YouTube? And this, this was what I found really, really interesting. I mean, I thought, I, I thought I would find the products would be tactical in nature, that, you know, they want one because it's a better way to train employees or, or it's a better way to, um, uh, to educate, maybe motivate, maybe um, get people involved. But really what you find is that all these organizations are reacting to higher level trends and they see these, these as really strategic tools that, that help inspire and engage their users. You know, and again, you know, employees are living in a very different world than they were even five years ago. And I heard a lot of we need to keep up with that and create similar experiences inside the enterprise from a lot of the people that I spoke to or watched. So this is eBay. eBay is a Kumu customer, and this case study should be published in the next week or so. It was handed in, uh, you know, late last week. And this is Hub TV. This is the eBay corporate YouTube system. And you know what I heard? What I heard from the gentleman that I spoke to was that you know video is the new document and generates you know, greater attention and interaction than memos or text-based documents. So the people that they're talking to, their employee base, they're not responding to documents. And they, obviously this is something you can tech, you know, test. You can send a document out, see how many people access it, and then you can send a video out and see how many people watched it and check the, you know, how many people watched it and for how long. 
what was the engagement level on that video. And they're finding that video is giving greater engagement to the employees that they're trying to reach. Um, and they're also finding that it's, in a lot of instances, it's a lot easier to produce you know, a quick video than to produce a long document. And I think all of us would kind of reflect on that and, and agree, right? I mean, you can spend hours writing a, a one-page document to get it perfect because you know, you know every letter and every spelling can be, can be uh, assessed by the viewer. On the other hand, if you just put an iPhone up and record something for a minute or two, you, know, you don't mind the hems and haws, but you can get it out in five or 10 minutes. So it's a faster way to create relevant communications. And, and as we see, it's, it's a much more, uh, people are responding better to it. And you know, I asked, you know, is this, is this a trend that relates to just millennials, right? And we all know that <laughs> anybody who has kids understands that, you know, as teenagers and young adults, they just consume things much differently than we ever did. I mean, they can't live without their, their, their iPads or their iPhones or, or their, you know, being around a computer. I think people of my generation and perhaps one generation younger are probably the same way. But it's not just the millennials that eBay is responding to in their employee group. They're saying, what he said was, and I thought this was pretty interesting, it's not the millennials in a workforce are used to communicating with video, it's that video is a better form of communication. So they're not, they're not doing this to respond to, to millennials. They're saying even the grandparents in the eBay workforce are using video more. They're creating video more than they used to 10 years ago. They're consuming video more than they used to 10 years ago. And that's why they're really interested in this corporate YouTube functionality. And here's where it really gets strategic. I mean, they're saying, um, the non-enterprise technology like Facebook and Twitter are, ex are setting expectations on content creation, discovery, and I'll talk more about discovery in a second, and consumption. So, you know, kids aren't, you know, they're not going to a, com to a computer to watch video. They're carrying their iPads with them everywhere, their, their iPhones with them everywhere, their Android devices with them everywhere, and they're consuming them everywhere. Um, and this was the key point that, that he made. You know, if we're not providing parity experiences for our employee, we're expressing a corporate policy that it's not OK to keep up, which puts us at risk of producing standard products or substandard products and services. So they're seeing their corporate YouTube as a way to you know, show their employees that, that inside their firewall, they're keeping up with ha what's happening on the outside. And they think that will inspire their, their employees to do the same with the products and services that they're creating. So it's, you know, it's not corporate YouTube as a tactical way to, to educate employees. It's a way to inspire them to keep up with what's happening outside the firewall. And some, you know, some usage details. What content types did they see dominating use on the network? Um, they saw the top-down webcasts as one major uh, content type. You know, it's occurring two or three times a week, and it has a mix of, of local and remote viewers. So when they put on an event, they might have a meeting in a room. If you're local, you come to the room. If you're not local, you sign on to the corporate network and watch it that way. That's one major form of content. A lot of the divisions are now sending out video as opposed to memos. That's, that's a second form. And then the employee-generated content, um, training videos, product demos, or other quick hit videos, uh, which are meant to be relevant to a business unit. eBay's got 40,000 employees, 20,000 of those employees are tech types who respond to phone calls. They're not in the group that, that really they expect to, to interact with this. They're more answering employee questions, and that's where they spend their time when they get to work. But of the remaining 20,000, uh, the guy I spoke with said he thinks about 1,000 employees or 5% of the workforce has actually uploaded videos into the system. So. I don't know if that's a high level or a low level, but it sure is a lot of different people. You know, it's, it's a big number, you know, even if it is a small percentage. Um, okay, a slide got deleted there. Um, a couple other things about what they're doing and how they're doing it. As I said before, there's no moderation in, uh, in eBay before the video goes up, although they do, they do tend to watch the videos and, and, uh, and make sure there's nothing offensive. But there, there's no moderation workflow, as we saw in the initial portion of the, uh, of the presentation. They, ex you know, they expect their users to kind of police themselves. The other thing was they don't really utilize the channel structure all that much. 
eBay has three major divisions, you know, eBay, PayPal, and then some other, some other divisions. And they really don't restrict employees from one division from watching videos in the other division because they see it as a real way to cross-pollinate for products and services. So they're not big on restricting viewers from certain videos. There, there are a couple of channels that, um, that, that regular employees can't watch. Obviously, there's legal channels and executive channels they can't access. But, but he estimated that 90 percent or 90 to 95 percent of the videos up on the eBay system can be watched by all uh, eBay employees. Okay, so this is, um, we're moving into, oops, not what I wanted to do. We're moving into lessons from Phillips. Again, this is from a, um, a case study available online. The bit.ly URL is down here. It's about a 20 minute long video. Pretty interesting video responding to a lot of the same trends that, um, that we saw reported by eBay. And these are some quotes that I pulled from the case study. And you know, trends that Phillips is tracking in their employees, you know, they're looking at additional mobility and connectivity, um, and just a lot of different devices that the different employees will be using on a daily basis. So obviously one of the big uh, points of differentiation will be the number of devices that a corporate YouTube system serves. They're looking at the social media component. 80% um, of the internet population is using social media and, and they obviously want to make that available to their employees as well. Point on, on um, going back to eBay for a second, a couple slides got deleted, not sure why. One of the slides I covered. The other slide I wanted to cover was what eBay was doing in addition to the, um, in addition to the Kumu functionality. So Kumu supplied them with the product. The product is pretty much as you know, what I showed in the beginning of the session. To that, eBay is investing in two areas. They're investing in the curation space. So eBay looked around and they said, well, who's doing a really good job with curation? We want the ability to present our employees in the portal structure with videos that we think are important to them. So the, the curation model that they looked at was the TED Talks model. And they said, we want a very flexible way to present categories of videos that are based upon you know, user designation. So outside of what they're getting from Qmu, they're investing in a curation function to, again, make the videos uh, more easily available to their employees. The second thing they're investing in is a social stream. So the social stream is what we see on Facebook. You know, who's doing what? Um, you know, uh, your best friend liked this video, your best friend hated this video, rated it a 10, whatever. But they're thinking, that the conclusion that they reached is that type of social inter interaction, that type of information from coworkers is much more important in terms of what a, an employee will find relevant than any kind of top-down structure that, um, that eBay could, could put into place. So in addition to what eBay is getting from Kumu, they're investing in two areas, curation and um, the social stream to make their video you know, more easily findable and to allow their employees to figure out what, what's important within the, uh, the social media structure. Um, and obviously social media is a trend that, that Phillips is tracking as well. And also the, the people are watching more video. Um, by 2016, Gartner is saying they expect each employee to, to watch 16 hours of video. Today, it's about 4.1 video each, each, um, each month. So those are, the, those are the trends that Phillips is responding to. And what they did is they, if you watch the video, you'll see they built a, a prototypical employee to try and understand, you know, this is Justin Smith. It was, would have been John Smith, but Justin Timberlake is so popular they decided to, to go Justin. Um, those wacky Philip employees. Um, and then they kind of defined him in terms of you know, how he was going to learn, how he was going to interact, how he was going to be productive. And then they decided that the corporate YouTube system was something they were going to have to strategically put in place to serve, um, to serve that new user. 
you know, their prototypical employee. And their conclusion was BlueTube is the enterprise video platform that they're, they're, they're implementing for employees to view, discuss, share, and upload video content for internal use. So again, you know, we're seeing a lot of similarity between what eBay found and why they implemented their system and why Philips implemented their system. And Oracle, again, this is a Kaltura video. You can watch it here. This very cerebral, very, very interesting talk. Um, and he was tracking more the video production trends, which everybody kind of touched on the same general things. But this gentleman was seeing you know, a dramatic shift in, in how video was produced. And he was, you know, so it used to be a lot of money, professional, you needed a cast and crew, specialized training, the production process took weeks to months. It was a very formal process that was scripted, top-down, authoritarian, crafted. Um, and now he's saying, you know, it's very cheap. Anybody with an iPhone can produce a video. Uh, it's do-it-yourself all the way through to, to point and shoot, you know, your, your condensing the video production time from weeks to months to minutes to hours and you know very casual very improvised and and what's interesting is the authoritarian and merit, you know merit, meritocratic so you know five years ago your training department created a video and this was the way it was done you know it was top down and today you've got an employee saying hey I just learned a new way to do this better let me show it to you and what's interesting you know it's interesting because that's creating new categories of experts. You know, five years ago, the experts were the designated experts. They were the guys who were on video or the girls who were on video in the training department videos. Today, you know, you can become useful if you're just plain useful. And, and this is something that, that some of the, the, uh, all the companies, I think, are hoping to leverage. So they're seeing a big democratization of video creation. Um, you know, access to, you know, again, Five years ago, you needed a $3,000 camcorder to do good work. Today, you know, an Android $200 phone can get the job done. You know, editing, same thing, good access to any of the music elements that, that, that are necessary for, uh, for video production. Also, democratization. Five years ago, there was no rating system for corporate training videos. They just kind of were. Now, you know, whether it's on YouTube or in a corporate, uh, corporate YouTube, the likes and the feedback are more relevant than the top-down approach that was relevant five years ago. So there's a, there's a democratization of both the production side and the rating side of how videos are perceived inside the organization. And you know, critical here for, for Oracle is that you know, your voice is determined not by your rank or position, but by the relative value of what you have to say. You know, it, it's, um, you know, everybody's uploaded videos to YouTube and everybody loves those views and loves those likes and, and that's what's important, right? I mean, it's not, we can all criticize the production value of a video, but if it's got 40 times more views than yours, the market has spoken. And I think that's something these companies are, are trying to respond to. The point that Oracle is bringing up is that, you know, again, it used to be five years ago, it was if we have a problem in production, let's plan a training video on how to, how to get around that. You know, weeks go on, scripts are written, production schedules are set, you know, six weeks later the video is done. Today, if you enable this type of corporate YouTube functionality, you can have an, you know, an employee go out there with an iPhone, I don't mean to pitch iPhones, but you know, any kind of phone, and they can shoot the video in a day and have it up there. So they're seeing Velocity of information time to market is being a very, very critical aspect and a very, very critical benefit of implementing a corporate YouTube system. You're avoiding the structure, you're avoiding the review process, you're getting it done faster, which makes it more useful. And if it's not useful, the comments and the reviews will reflect that. And you know, it, it's it's not an authoritarian. You must watch this. It's all <laughs> meritocracy. So. You know, the, the, the paradigms are changing. Um, and, and these are the benefits of video in the enterprise, which largely are enabled by the corporate YouTube functionality that Oracle was able to put together. You know, speed, I think, is very critical. Authenticity, you know, who's doing, you know, who are the experts? It's not who we say they are. It, it, it's who people are saying are the experts. It's the likes and, and the ratings. Um, And then, you know, all, all the way down to identifying 
excellence gurus and brand champions, the people who really are recognized in, within the organization. I had a dinner with a friend last night, and she was talking about, you know, there are people inside her organization who they may be a, a tech, they may be an engineer, but because they're so enthusiastic, because they're so vocal, they are the gurus, they are the experts, even though they're not designated as such by the company. And that's what, within, within the context of a corporate YouTube, that's the type of thing that, that really can, uh, can flourish. So eBay, you know, again, I was impressed that they saw this as a very strategic function. You know, they felt this very strong compunction to keep up with what their employees were experiencing outside the enterprise. Um, Philips saw this more as, as necessary to kind of keep meeting the needs of the individual employees, while Oracle saw this a way of, of really accelerating the flow of information and, again, keeping it or, or even leveraging a lot of the trends in, in the video production space. So how do you choose a system if you want one? You know, again, I think the first six or seven slides that I showed that showed the basic workflow, the, the basic functionality, that's going to be consistent between all the vendors. You know, everybody's going to have an upload process. Everybody's going to have a, a review and approval process. I think the first thing I would do is ask the current vendor. I mean, if Kaltura is your OVP, they're going to have a corporate YouTube system. You're going to get a lot of benefits from, from using their system. Intel is a custom of media platform. They use their webcast platform. When media platform implemented Primetime, which is a corporate YouTube system, they started using you know, their corporate uh, YouTube system because it was easy to integrate the content. So if you have some kind of provider now, ask about you know, what their plans are for, um, for implementing corporate YouTube functionality. Deployment model is, you know, varies significantly between the vendors. If you need SAS, make sure it's available SAS. If you need it behind the firewall, make sure it's available that way. Um, a lot of the pain points are going to be on the integration side. Um, when I say integration, I mean existing portal and login. You know, how easy it go is it going to be to integrate with your existing corporate login? What's it going to cost? If you've got a sophisticated internal video delivery infrastructure, you want to see how it's going to integrate with that, what the pain points of that will be. Um, and then it's always interesting to, to figure out whether they're going to distribute single file or adaptive streaming. So th that's a point that I would check pretty early on. Playback platform support, we covered that. Um, and this is something I would test because it, it's, a, it's a dynamic capability, but you're going to need support for, you know, obviously all the desktop and all the mobile platforms and, you know, new mobile platforms as well, like Windows 8 from nowhere got, you know, 5 to 8 percent, depending on who you look at in terms of overall penetration. Windows Phone is, is getting to be a pretty critical capability. And once you scan through all of these, you know, I think it's time to consider pricing. Pricing is going to vary dramatically by, um, by, uh, by vendor. A couple of places to look to for additional details. And again, this presentation will be available on my website at streaminglearningcenter.com, streaminglearningcenter.com by the end of today. Um, this is a spreadsheet Kaltura sent me. They were kind enough to point out that, shockingly, their product meets all the criteria that they specified. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, but this is the kind of thing that's, you know, I think it's really helpful. This, this is a list of features that, um, you know, that you can check, they're either important to you or not. And Vidismo, Vidismo has one of the, okay, well you see the URL. Vidismo has one of the broadest product offerings that I saw. They have everything from, you know, integration with learning management platforms to paywalls so you can monetize your content. So I think if you look at these, the comparison of their internal products, you'll get a good sense of the capabilities that some systems have. Many of those features will be unimportant to you. You know, I, I think, you know, what I learned with, with eBay, you know, it's like Microsoft Word. It's probably got a million features, and we probably use, you know, 5% of them. And I think that's going to be the way it is for most, most corporate YouTubes. We're going to use the central 5%, and a lot of the features won't matter. But I think the, the Vidismo system is so broad that it'll, you know, you can look through that and say, yeah, we want that, yeah, we, we don't need that, and then kind of get a good sense of other features you may want to consider. Once you have that, um, you know, go back and shop with other vendors. That's all I have. Any questions?
say, well, we kind of have a strategic idea. We want people to think we're keeping up with things. And then there's Auburn, something else beneficial or detrimental strategically that happens exponentially like this. So the question is, was there any kind of longitudinal work done? Did they come back um, after implementing and then come up with additional comments? I, th I think the case studies were very were done after the system had already been implemented for a while. So I don't think it was, you know, we got it in yesterday, what do you think? It was more, we've been working on this for two or three years, this is what we're finding. So I, I think, you know, the, the corporate YouTube market feels new, but I think there's been a lot of products out there providing this capability for the last two or three years. I just don't think it coalesced into, you know, it bubbled up into something that was uh, identifiable until very recently. So these, you know, <coughs> eBay's been working with Kumu, I want to say since 2006, and, and, and Philips and Kaltura and, and Oracle and Kaltura, they may not go back that long, but, but it was clear that the, the, uh, the installations were pretty mature. Okay, let's, let's, um, if you have questions for him, why don't you, I don't mean to, but it's best if we. I just wanted to make a, a comment about this, and that, that is that it, at the core of it all is the complexity of your network and how this is going to integrate with that network. And I think that. And, and then comes all the features and bells and whistles that you want to put in this place. I think that's right. So, because it's, that's going to be the major pain point. That's and, the major pain point. And, you know. And again, I, notwithstanding his comments, I think we're going to have the Microsoft Word paradigm where 95% of the users are going to use 5% of the features, and those are the 5% that everybody provides. So I wouldn't get caught up on you know the. I think editing's great. I know that, that other vendors have it as well. But one question is, I mean, how long has, to his point, how long has um, Philips and Oracle been using your system for corporate YouTube type functionality? Which one? I think the overall Okay, so, so it's, it could be as long as four years. It, either way, I mean, it was pretty clear that it wasn't installed yesterday. They're, they're pretty, pretty, mature, uh, pretty, pretty mature uses. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, thanks for your attention.